Are you ready to hustle? I need to hustle, hustle. Welcome to The Hustle with Justin Harrison, the ultimate podcast for money, motivation, and inspiration. In this season of The Hustle Podcast, we're focusing in on solo entrepreneurs, small businesses, and talking to the people behind these businesses and focusing in on their personal finance and entrepreneurial questions. So today, we're in Pretoria, we're with Karina, and you've got some questions. So my first question to you is, I have different income streams in my business. Yeah. Will you suggest I split it into other businesses? And will you suggest I put it in a sole proprietor or a PTY? My business is currently an SME. So I would say there's probably no solid reason to split the income at this point. Okay. Because I've had a look at your business. Yes. The only time it makes sense to start splitting your business is when one of your businesses is going to supply the other business. Okay. Okay. If you're doing it purely to split the revenue, I would treat them as different business units within the business. Mm. But to create the complication of doing extra accounting mm. just for the sake of it and the cost of the extra accounting yes. does not make sense. Mm. So I suppose I'd put a question back to you. Why do you want to separate the money? Why do you want to separate the income streams? Yeah, I think it's to, well, my, uh, to be honest, it was to uh, save on that. So I don't, I don't think that's a, a good enough reason. Okay. I think what you're going to potentially save is worth more of a headache. Mm. Keep it simple, keep it light, and then just run separate P&L reports for each part of the business, but okay. under one actual company structure. Okay, like a holding company. Like a holding company. So treat your company like a holding company, and for the different divisions, just look at them differently. Okay. Perhaps have a separate bank account for them. Mm. Okay. Under the main business, right? Yes. And then you know exactly what to expense from there. You know exactly what to report on from there. And you can treat it like its own profit center. I see. Until it gets to a point where it warrants being on its own. Mm. But you're not there yet. Okay. Then my next question is, I know an income stream that will be great in my field is to create content yep. and to sell programs. Yeah. But I am an introvert. How can I work around that? I think everybody's inherently introverted. Most people are quite surprised to learn mm. that I actually don't like being in front of people. Yeah. I am naturally introverted. Mm. But I think if you're passionate enough about a subject mm. and you have content of value to deliver, you can mm. overcome your, your introverted nature. Mm. And I think it's easier to speak to a camera if you're introverted. Mm. That is to speak to an actual live audience. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So I think you should find comfort in that. Mm. And I think the only way to grow is to push yourself. Mm. And so one of the things that I have told a lot of people in the past, if they're very introverted, with something that I did, just go start talking to strangers more regularly. Mm. Okay. Get out of your comfort zone. Mm. And the thing that felt hard today will feel very easy a few months from now. Mm. Okay, thank you. Then the next question is, my business without me does not exist. How do I change that? I think you, you need to, first of all, we were talking about this earlier, first protocol technology, mm. second protocol people. Mm. So whatever you can systemize and automate, mm. do that as much as possible. Mm. Then it's about getting enough money together in terms of profit to be able to employ people to take care of a lot of the day-to-day -day running. Yes. As an entrepreneur, you want to eventually not be part of the, the machinery. Mm. You want to eventually direct the machinery. Yes. But there is no business in the world, mm. even in passive income, where you will not have involvement. Sure. Even as a retired person, mm. you're still going to have to look over your money. Sure. There's no ever totally disconnecting. No. But in terms of being part of the day-to-day -day machinery, mm. First, see what you can automate. Secondly, make enough money to put good people in. Mm. And then have good policies and processes in place mm. so that you have the confidence that they'll do their job properly. Because mm. there's nothing worse than putting somebody in mm. and they stuff it up. Absolutely. Right? So whilst you're doing it yourself, mm. document the process okay. so that you can hand it over to somebody else. Okay. I see what you mean. You need to literally have a training manual. My advice around people is... Hire very slowly, fire very quickly. Oh, yeah. I agree. 
because the human element, especially in a predominantly female-led business, mm-hmm. there's a lot of estrogen <laughs> in the <laughs> air. Around. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. So then my last question is, I did train other people to do what I do in the past, and then they take this knowledge, open their own businesses, 10 minutes away from me, how can I do this different? You're never going to solve that problem completely. Mm. So my view is you might as well have a hand in the machinery. Mm. You're going to bring people into your business. They're going to see what you're doing. They're mm. going to see the money you make. Mm. And ultimately, they're going to want to go out and do it for themselves. Mm. So then the question is, do you get angry and bitter about it? Or do you say, hey, maybe there's an opportunity here? Mm. Maybe the opportunity is to train. Maybe the opportunity is to franchise. Mm. Maybe the opportunity is to supply product. Mm. Maybe the opportunity is to provide specialized services on top of what they're currently going out there and providing and work together. So instead of seeing this, what you would deem competition, as adversarial, Mm. see it as an opportunity. Okay. My greatest collaborations Mm. come from people who are in direct competition to me. Okay. In my industries and my businesses that, that we're in, mm. a lot of them are very close-knit industries. There's not a lot of people doing what we do. Mm. And it can feel very threatening when people plagiarize you and copy you. Mm. But over the years, I've developed a resilience to go in and turn those into partnerships. Okay, see what you mean. And so at the end of the day, it's actually good for your industry. Mm. The more people are out there consuming what it is that you're offering, mm. right? Because at the moment, you're almost like, you're one of very few, right? Mm. And so you're having to convert people to this idea of holistic health and mm. a whole different way of looking at health. Mm. But what if it became mainstream? Isn't that better for your business? Mm. Absolutely. And so I don't see competition as competition. Okay. In fact, I would go and help them. <laughs> mm. Yes. I would see where I can add the most amount of value. Mm. And then I would see if maybe there's a system that I have that I can provide to them and make money of that system. Mm -hmm. good idea maybe they can promote your content maybe they can use your content so there's there's great like competition to me is an opportunity for collaboration and unfortunately it's a south african mindset Mm -hmm. we don't want to share absolutely that is so true like i'm sure that when that person went off you felt very threatened i did yeah i did and angry Mm -hmm. and how dare she Absolutely. I'm guessing it was a she. It how, was a she. How dare she, right? Yes. Um, Instead of going, hey, well done for going on your own. Mm-hmm. I'd like to be part of your journey. Mm-hmm. How do I support you? How do we work together? And then when you see each other in town, mm-hmm. you don't have to dodge each other. Right. How do we collectively grow this industry? Okay. If you think about any industry, they've got industry bodies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The direct competitors are all falling under an industry body, but ultimately figuring out how to collaborate how to control pricing structures fairly in the marketplace, mm. how to manage supply and demand in the marketplace. We go to the Egg Association, the, uh, the Avocado Growers Association. Mm. That's all about collaboration. Okay. But indirectly, those people are in direct competition with each other. It's a good way to look at it. Thank you. If you found value from this episode of the Hustle Podcast, please be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button depending on the platform that you're on. And if you are finding value from the content that we're putting out here in the podcast, please be sure to leave us a rating on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps our content get out there and helps new people discover this amazing podcast. And remember, hustle makes muscle. Stay motivated by The Hustle. Talkers talk, but hustlers hustle. Find more episodes at ecr.co.za or your favorite podcast app.